All right, now let's uh, discuss this further. We're now joined via Zoom by the Portfolio Committee on Basic Education, the chairperson, Bongiwe Mbingo Gigaba. Ma'am, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. First, before we get into your oversight visit, I want your reaction to the Auditor General's Office naming the Department of Basic Education this week as one of the 21 of government's national departments consistently incurring fruitless and wasteful expenditure over uh, a five-year period. Good afternoon, uh, Unati, and good afternoon to the viewers at, at home as well. Um, we have listened as well to what the Auditor General um, has been raising. And I think from our side as the Portfolio Committee, um, it's issues that we also continuously uh, raise when we meet with the department. But I must say, on behalf of the Portfolio Committee, we are also going to have our own meeting where the Auditor General is going to brief us um, proper on what he thinks as the Auditor General's office would have to be done by the Department of Education. But on top of that, um, we understand that the department, whatever that the Auditor General would recommend that they they, they, they will have to do, um, they they always do that. Um, they always try to 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 deal with the with the issues that the auditor general is is raising but we are aware as the portfolio committee what the auditor general has raised we will have our separate meeting with the auditor general where they will be able to take us through on each and every issue that has caused the wasteful and and fruitless expenditure by the Department of Basic Education. Of course, one of uh, you know the the outcomes of the Auditor General's uh, you know uh, report and 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 just some of the announcements that she was making now is that you know there is uh, an underspending of vital programs. So let's actually speak to your current oversight visits to the various provinces. Your last one being in Mpumalanga, in as far as special schools are concerned. What have you been seeing on the ground? I'm particularly interested in what the department is not doing in light of what the Auditor General has just released recently? Um, with regards to the oversight in Pumalanga, um, we must say that we are very, um, we are not happy by the manner in which the department um, is handling the issue of special schools. Um, look, special schools, in our views, uh, they accommodate learners um, in, in, in different parts of the province. And that is also the case in Bumalanga, because some of the special schools that we were in, um, it's special schools that are continuing with uh, teaching and learning, but learners there do not have um, hostels. And except for the issue of 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 hostels um that is now in your Tsakane special school but also um in in many of other uh, special schools that that we went to except for tra for hostels the transport that the department is giving to those type of learners is not um, conducive for them and resourcing them in terms of teachers there might be teachers in some, but when you look into those schools, you need some also specialists that must look into those types of children. And the department is not necessarily hiring a right specialist to deal with um, um, those those things uh, on our team. All right, so we heard in that report just before this interview, uh, the Department of Education basically uh, saying that it is aware of these problems and that it does have a plan in place. Now, my question to you in your role, you know, in giving oversight as a portfolio committee, what are you doing to make sure that there's adequate resources uh, at these particular schools and that uh, the shortages of qualified teachers, that gap is closed and it's close as soon as possible because of just some of the things that you've seen in this one particular province? Look, we, we, we have went to, to the province, uh, like you know, 
we have managed to experience those challenges by our own eyes. We have been able to see exactly what is going on. So from there, now that we have moved from the province, we consolidate a report that we table in Parliament. And that report has got um, recommendations that are meant for the department and the province that, um, in this case, will be Mpumalanga to implement. But besides that, as a committee as well, we have our own follow-up meetings with Mpumalanga because you remember we have touch based in all districts. They've got four districts in that province. We have touch based in each and every district. So a follow up would be to say, look, we were in Takane on the 22nd of um, August. And we have agreed this and that and that must be done. So in that in that meeting, which we are going to have as a as a as a follow up meeting, we would expect the department to tell us this is what we have done since you have left. So our role is to make sure that whatever we have found as a challenge, because our challenges, you would remember, they would have your short term and, and mid term and long term solutions. But those that we have classified as short-term solutions, we have expected that uh, probably by the end of this month, they would have um, 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 dealt with them. Issues of transport, we know that it's a long process they would have to apply for. Them. But in that meeting, they will have to tell us we have applied and this is, far, this is how far we are. It cannot be accepted that we've got a learner that goes to a school every day to and fro, um, um, doing 196 kilometers a day. I mean, that cannot be accepted, but they will have to find solutions. So our role is to make sure that after we have identified these are the problems, we expect both the, the province and DBE to work together in making sure that they, they rectify what we have seen as a challenge in a province. So you say that um, especially because your concern is around, you know, the transportation of these learners who do have special needs um, and, of course, require some form of special transportation. What's the deadline there? Uh, I know that you've said that it will take a little bit of, uh, you know, time. But since, you, since this is not your first visit, I would imagine that you want them to wrap these up as soon as possible this year. We want them to, to, to deal with them as soon as possible, like you are saying, Yunati. But in Bumalanga, um, specific, this was our first visit, and this is the last province that we are visiting. As, but it's our, it's our first visit in, in, in Bumalanga. The transport issue, when they were responding to us, they have told that uh, the province would have to... Um, of course, you know, there are issues of application. They will have to apply. The province would have to approve. And um, those issues are not a uh, part of this financial aid. So with regards to transport, it's something that we know they will apply for it to be effected in the next financial year, which is 2023-2024 from April. So from April 2023 um, to the whole financial year, we would expect we would expect them to give those schools um, the necessary um, transports that are conducive um, for those um, particular learners. All right, Chairperson, thank you so much for your time uh, this afternoon. Really do appreciate your time. That was Bongiwe Mbimo Kigaba, and she is the Portfolio Committee on Basic Education, and she is the Chairperson of that committee.